600 years later, according to Muslim belief, Muhammad departed for the throne of God from the sacred rock of Jerusalem where the temple had stood. Aware of the holy books of the Jews and Christians, Muhammad had converted the idolatrous tribes of Arabia to the concept of one God. Only six years after his death, an army of his followers stood at Jerusalem's gates, claiming the city as their own. Muslims were to rule Jerusalem for the next 1,300 years, except for two interruptions when the Crusaders wrested the city from them. In the 20th century, the flame of war again flared in the Holy Land. World War I, the British march into Palestine to fight the Ottoman Turks. As it has some 20 times in its recorded history, in 1917, Jerusalem falls. The holy city is surrendered to the British. Mindful that Jesus had walked into Jerusalem, General Sir Edmund Allenby humbly enters Jaffa Gate on foot. There are renewed stirrings of Zionism, the concept of a modern Jewish nation. In 1947, the United Nations votes to end the British mandate and partition Palestine into Jewish and Arab states. May 14, 1948, David Ben-Gurion, citing the fulfillment of the dream of generations, makes a proclamation Jews everywhere have long awaited. The State of Israel has arisen. The next day, six neighboring Arab countries invade, determined to crush the infant nation before it is born. With Jerusalem under siege and the Jewish quarter ready to fall, the holy books are removed. Jerusalem is a divided city. For 19 years, the old city will be ruled by Jordan. In 1967, as the Six-Day War rages, Israeli paratroopers storm through St. Stephen's Gate. Defense Minister Moshe Dayan arrives at the Western Wall, in Jewish hands again for the first time in 2,000 years. According to ancient custom, General Dayan writes a prayer to place in the wall. May peace come to the Jewish people. 